What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in and talk about SMGs in Destiny 2. I think submachine guns at the moment are in a really interesting place in the game, initially because a lot of them are very very strong and that's kind of the obvious part. We've got weapons like Recluse lying around, and then even old exotics like Huckleberry, which are shining pretty bright right now, and even missed certain nerfs which other weapons saw via their perks, and we will talk about those, but I think the other cool thing about SMGs at the moment is that they sit really well with many of the strongest builds in the game, and they are supported by some of the Season 8 artifact mods as well, so I just kind of wanted to jump in in general, talk about some of the really strong weapons and some of the builds and why you totally shouldn't sleep on them right now. So if you guys enjoyed the video, a rating really helps me out below, but otherwise let's get into it. And so before we talk about newer weapons, builds, artifact mods and things like that, I think in general at the moment Huckleberry is totally worth talking about. It is a weapon that in my opinion you're going to probably want to use with the Catalyst, but in general it is really good because most instances of Rampage were actually nerfed at the launch of Shadowkeep. That is with the exception of Huckleberry, which is rightly so in my opinion because it is an exotic, but when you pair Rampage doing its maximum damage or the same damage values that we would originally see, and then the auto reloads that you get from the Catalyst and the archetype, which does generally pretty well. It is still a really good weapon in PvE, and when you take that catalyst with every kill fully reloading the weapon, you can pretty much keep max stacks of rampage up, and then intentionally apply it to tankier targets. And so in general, as a primary kinetic weapon, it does feel really godly in PvE at the moment. The main downsides really would be that it takes your exotic slot, and naturally in a lot of our high-end PvE content, DPS weapons like Izanagi's Burden are really good. And then on top of this, Huckleberry also doesn't really synergize as well or benefit from new artifact mods like some of the other SMGs. Of course, with the exception of Enhanced SMG Loader, which is still really useful if you get stuck having to reload. Otherwise, it does have downsides, but paired with the right legendaries in, say, mid-tier PvE content, so maybe stuff like the dungeon at the kind of base level, or open-world Vex invasions as opposed to kind of hero or master difficulty content. Yeah, I'd say Huckleberry feels really good in that mid-tier PvE stuff. Definitely worth giving it a try, but for stuff that pairs a lot better with the current artifact, there are some really strong weapons which become part of some pretty tasty builds. So initially, to talk about the weapons, you've got things like the new Gambit SMG Exit Strategy. There are a couple of different perk combinations, but it can get Threat Detector and Swashbuckler. Of course, Threat Detector grants increased reload, stability and handling when enemies are close, and then Swashbuckler grants the weapon bonus damage on kills and melee kills, so it is all about being right up close. And even if you have the alternative perk roll, so Surrounded, which increases damage when enemies are in close proximity, you can pair that with the Surrounded spec mod, which is going to be pretty nasty. To get Exit Strategy, of course, you need to complete the Gambit quest for Season 8. I jumped on my friend Jarv's account to try the weapon out because I haven't got it on my own account just yet. He also has a video that'll help you get the quest done quicker, and if you want to check that out, I'll link it down below. However, at the same time, if you don't have Exit Strategy, you might be able to get lucky with Every Waking Moment, which comes from the Lectern of Enchantment, and this one can get Swashbuckler as well. Mine actually has Subsistence, which is kind of meh, but you can get Outlaw and Swashbuckler on Every Waking Moment, or you could look out for the Bug Out Bag, which can also roll with Swashbuckler, and this is the the SMG that comes from the Reckoning. Otherwise, Vex Offensive also has the Subjunctive SMG, and this one can get Outlaw in that first slot, as well as Threat Detector, and then can get Surrounded and Swashbuckler, as well as Multi-Kill Clip and Rampage. But of course, Surrounded and Swashbuckler pretty much make it an energy version of the Exit strategy. But to the actual exciting bit, Swashbuckler does pair really well with some of the possible builds in the game, and SMGs in general are kind of helped by a couple of different artifact mods, so you've got Enhanced SMG Loader, that's the really obvious one, but also you've got Ballistic Combo, which grants melee energy on final blows with shield piercing weapons, and then Breach Refractor, where you get grenade energy on final blows with shield piercing weapons as well. And of course, shield piercing rounds will come as part of anti-barrier rounds, which can also be applied to SMGs. Once again, all of these bonuses coming from the Season 8 artifact. It's definitely worth bearing them in mind with some of the builds that you can use in the game, so one that is especially good with the Exit Strategy SMG is a Worm God Caress and 1-2 Punch build for Titans. I know I've mentioned this before, but it is a really, really fun and strong build. If you're on the Bottom Tree Striker subclass, fully charged melee kills, will reload the weapon, increase stability and damage, and then as you make kills or melee kills, Swashbuckler on the SMG is going to increase the weapon's damage, and this allows you to chew through a few targets, but then with Threat Detector, you get really fast reloads for when you run out of ammo. You can also kind of cancel the end of the reload animation by making a melee kill on a nearby target once you see the ammo counter is full again, and basically this forces the end of that reload animation to cancel, and that gets you back to killing stuff much quicker, as opposed to being locked into that animation for another kind of half a second or something. So that in itself is really neat, but when you make that melee kill, it again will trigger Swashbuckler on the SMG to 
keep your damage up, and you've got this kind of godly gameplay loop, and that feels especially potent once you throw Worm God Caress into the loop as well. So with this, you can stack melee damage up to five times. That is going to let you produce massive amounts of melee damage. But bear in mind, you can still equip a one-two punch shotgun here as well. Thunder Coil from the artifact will increase melee damage, so if you've got that equipped at the same time, you can switch out to the shotgun to use one-two punch to hit bosses or tanky targets with massive amounts of damage. I know we moved away from the SMG itself for just a moment there, but really, it means that with an SMG like Exit Strategy, you can have that ad clearing capacity, but then you can chew through a bunch of targets really fast, make your melee kills count by buffing your weapons damage, potentially auto-reloading your weapons, or even cancelling a chunk of that reload animation, and then you can throw other weapons or subclass setups in there to really round it out as part of an actual build. You can also run Warlock builds kind of similar to this using Winter's Guile. It does basically the same thing as Worm Gods, but it certainly isn't quite as effective, primarily because of the subclass options for Titans. There is also Liar's Handshake for Hunters, but again, on the build side, this does pair much better with the Striker Worm God combo. A Warlock build that we have covered does include Recluse as one of the best options, and that's because, well, we don't really need to say it, do we? Recluse is still a very, very strong weapon everywhere in the game. Master of Arms is still immensely good for PvE and PvP, but especially for PvP, the range is pretty crazy, and the weapon remains one of the best choices all around, to the point that it's even kind of controversial in PvP at the moment. And so Recluse is safely the best SMG you could rock in PvP at the moment, but it also plays into some really strong builds for PvE as well. And not least, we have the Warlock Devour build. Of course, with the bottom tree Voidwalker's Devourer active, kills will regenerate health, and then throwing Breach Refractor from the artifact onto your chest piece. With a shield piercing mod slotted onto Recluse, it'll allow Recluse kills to grant you grenade energy back. And then if you throw on Nezarek Sin, Void kills will increase ability regen, which essentially means you can use Recluse to farm out all of your ability recharges really, really quickly, but especially your grenades, which will charge up via Breach Refractor, but also Nezarek Sin, and that means it's really easy to keep Devourer up permanently. Also, you'll never stop getting health regen, and then Nezarek Sin will grant you your class ability and super energy at an incredible rate. So all of this is happening, firstly, because it's a very good build, but also because Recluse is such a perfect way to kind of fuel that build. In itself, it's an immensely strong weapon, but it just so happens that shield mods and even enhanced SMG loader are a thing at the moment. And then we have subclass trees like Devour, and they're all kind of perfectly synergizing to feed each other. And so it's really interesting to look at how weapons can actually affect other stuff in the sandbox. But otherwise, on the subject of SMGs, this is a good shout for new players, but players in general at the moment, Risk Runner is still an absolute monster. You can get the Catalyst and the weapon guaranteed if you are new via the Banshee quest risk and reward. And I actually didn't have the Catalyst before I ran the quest, so if you don't have it, that is a way to get it. And if you've never used Risk Runner, the weapon has Arc Conductor, and this grants resistance against Arc Damage when taking Arc Damage. And then when that perk is active, shots fired have the chance to become Chain Lightning and also return ammo. And this happens pretty much nearly all of the time, it feels like, when you're actually using the weapon. And then the Catalyst increases the weapon's range, and this kind of increases the range of the Chain Lightning with it. So it's really solid, but with a lot of Hive content right now, the weapon is pretty strong because there's often a Boomer or a Wizard nearby to hit you with Arc Damage. But also Thrall melee damage will proc it, so it really shines in content like Altars of Sorrow, because especially with the timer on the activity, you can actually use it to clear crazy numbers of enemies really quickly. You can proc it again and again from Thrall or the other enemies that do arc damage, and kind of use it to continuously give yourself a buffer on the timer, especially if your team is taking a little bit longer to take down some of the enemies. So that's really just one example. We also saw weapon damage and things change going into Shadowkeep, and since many weapon archetypes take longer to kill stuff now, SMGs in general are feeling really strong versus other primary slot weapons. And I think for Risk Runner in particular, having such kind of huge crowd control capacity is really, really nice. And so with all of the stuff that we've spoken about in this video, I thought it was definitely worth it, especially with how submachine guns interact with the artifact at the moment, and versus hand cannons and auto rifles or even bows, which are also featured in artifact mods, SMGs definitely are one of the top picks. So yeah, I'd totally love to hear your thoughts on SMGs at the moment and how they're kind of working with a few of the different builds, their position in the sandbox, any awesome roles on SMGs that you've got, and your thoughts on weapons like Recluse, which of course is a pretty divisive weapon at the moment, especially on the subject of PvP. And so let me know what you think down in the comment section, guys, but if you've enjoyed this video, a rating below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel and you do enjoy the content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button to see a lot more. But otherwise, thank you as always for tuning in, and whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.